This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you drive long haul, short haul, or heavy haul, they're here to empower and inspire women in the trades on TNCRadio.live. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. You're listening to Women Road Warriors on TNCRadio.live with Kathy DeCaro and Shelly Johnson. I'm Shelly. I'm Kathy. Today we have a Hollywood legend and icon with us who's had quite the career that spanned decades in film, television, and theater. Ruta Lee got her start in 1953 before she even had an agent by appearing on the George Burns and Gracie Allen show. After that, she landed an agent who got her a job on the Roy Rogers show. She's worked with so many Hollywood greats. In addition to iconic films, Lee's appeared in guest starring roles on major TV shows like Gunsmoke, The Love Boat, Three's Company, Roseanne, Murder, She Wrote, even Scooby-Doo. She's worked with remarkable leading men, including Clint Eastwood, Burt Reynolds, Charles Bronson, James Garner, Johnny Carson, Fred Astaire, Robin Williams, Frank Sinatra, and the rest of the Rat Pack. And she's been friends with Hollywood greats like Debbie Reynolds, Rona Barrett, Phyllis Diller, Lucille Ball and Sally Fields. Ruta has a new book of memoirs out, which we're eager to talk about. It's called Consider Your Ass Kissed. I love that title, by the way. It's a treasure trove of Hollywood history. Ruta Lee is truly a Hollywood legend and glam girl, and we're very honored to have her on the show today. Welcome, Ruta. Shelley, Kathy, would you girls do my eulogy, please? Because that was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you just gave my whole life history. God bless you. That is <laughs> nice. I'm so happy to be with you, adorable tomatoes. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, you. You had quite the career. What inspired you to get into Hollywood? Well, I think what inspired me was that I came out of my mother's womb singing and dancing. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. <laughs> my, my mom, which is a, a, a Lithuanian born and bred and married lady who came from a teeny tiny little farm where they were very, very rich if they had a cow, you know, um, and carried her shoes to church all the time because they had to be passed down to the next girl in the next generation. And um, she knew nothing about show business, but she listened to my a uh, kindergarten teacher who said to her, Mary, you have got to do something with this girl. She's different from the other children in my my classes here in the kindergarten. Uh, give her music lessons and some dancing lessons or something because she she is a standout. And my mother took her seriously and, and gave me the lessons. I hated practice. <laughs> I still hate practice, but love performing, you know. Sure. And, uh, and so eventually, because she was so sure that I was Lithuania's answer to Shirley Temple, um, she she knew a little bit about movies, nothing about theater, and it planned on getting me somehow to where movies were made. And she corresponded with a marvelous priest who had started the Lithuanian Catholic Church here in Los Angeles. And he invited them to come out and spend a little time at his tiny church slash rectory slash residence. Uh, and he, he was just wonderful. And thanks to him, uh, he, my folks fell madly in love with Southern California. Uh, we were up to our fannies in snow in Montreal, and, and uh, here they were with flowers blooming and palm trees waving and birds singing and bees buzzing, and it was all just too wonderful. And eventually they got their papers uh, to come to the United States, which was kind of miraculous, because after the war, uh, the uh, all the visas and uh, permits to come into the U.S. were given to displaced persons all over Europe that were of Lithuanian descent. But God mm -hmm. listened to my mother's prayers, and uh, we got papers to come, and that's how I got started in Hollywood. And I was, uh, you know, all of 11 years old, I guess, when we made the move. But uh, what a fortuitous move my mom saw to it that we made. Absolutely. And thank God 
they were the kind of people that supported my efforts all the way through. And the nice part is, girls, that they both lived long enough, especially my mom, because she lived long past my dad, um, that they both got to see me arrive at some modicum of success in the business and, and be able to make a living at, at what I enjoyed doing, which is kind of a great blessing, I think. If any of us have jobs doing what we love doing, it's really great. Well, you've had such a stellar career, and what a wonderful tribute to your parents who were so fortuitous in, in helping you and, and recognizing and listening to your kindergarten teacher. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. I mean, I owe my whole career to that lady, and then I owe my whole career to the priest that invited them out and thought it was a great idea, you know. Absolutely. If, if I stop and think about it, my first steps in show business were usually at the church hall, you know, where there was either I sang in, in the little children's choir or I, I did some sort of dancing and carrying on as a child. And then other Lithuanian communities heard about me and they would have me come to Boston or New York and perform in whatever Lithuanian hall or church hall there was. So they were my first steps, uh, and they were always uh, something to do with the Almighty, which is kind of an interesting thing. So uh, I'm, I'm still connected and say, thank God for every good thing that came my way, you know? Well, divine guidance is always, always helpful. Oh, yes, yes, yes. If only we can learn to listen to the tinkle of the bells or the sighing of the wind or whatever that tells us what the answer is. Absolutely. I find it amazing that you appeared on the George Burns and Gracie Allen show and you didn't have an agent yet. That's, that's really an accomplishment. I think I may, I'll tell you how that happened. I was working all the way through high school. I went to Hollywood high. I had been in Catholic schools all of my life, and it was like getting out of jail to go to Hollywood High. It was spectacular <laughs> and wonderful, and a great theater arts department, and they really stressed it, and a great theater in which to work. It's a venue that is often used for outside productions. And while I was in high school, it's a wonder that I got out of high school because I was working at night at the gallery stage. Mm -hmm. which is a small theater, uh, and and yet you had rehearsals before the performance or rehearsals after for the next show coming up, and I was going to school at the same time. And one of the producers there also worked on the Burns and Allen show as an associate producer, and he suggested me for a role, and I got it, and, and that was kind of wonderful, and that's what got me my Screen Actors Guild card. Almost excellent. Yep. It's essential, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You wouldn't really even be considered without that for some of the major and roles. You know, the, the, the Burns and Allen people were very, very dear to me. And, and Mr. Burns, um, after Gracie had already died, while she was still alive, I would get included every once in a while. Not, not often. I don't mean it was a daily or monthly procedure. But maybe once or twice a year, I'd get invited by them to their home if they were having a cocktail bash or something in their beautiful backyard on Maple Street in Beverly Hills. And I, I just thought that was so splendid to be included with these sophisticated Hollywood people, you know, this, this newbie here. Uh, sure. and, and that's kind of a lovely thing that has happened um, in many cases. The, the lovely woman, Gail Patrick, who was the producer of the Perry Mason show. Now, Gail Patrick was a big star uh, in movies, you know, in the 30s and the 40s and into the 50s. And to all of a sudden have her hire me, not just once, but like six times, I think I did a lot of episodes of the Perry Mason. Wow. I got to play all wow. sorts of different characters. Sometimes I was the, the good, good goody two-shoes with the heart of gold, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was a hooker with a heart of golden teeth to match. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I was, uh, you know, the murderess. Um, and it was such a lovely training ground for me. Just great. And Gail Patrick would include me in her cocktail and dinner parties occasionally. 
and I, I just never forgot how splendid that was for somebody just beginning in the business. You had to have been starstruck initially. I know I would have been. Yeah. You know, you're starstruck, except you're so young and stupid <laughs> that you, you think <laughs> this is going to happen all the time, you know, that it's going to be an ongoing thing. So, uh, you know, so when I was working with Frank Sinatra, I got used to it and thought, oh, yeah, this happens all the time, you know. <laughs> You know, you, you began at a time when women still had a lot of challenges in Hollywood, uh, which was dominated by men and, and maybe a lot of double standards. I think it took a, a lot of tenacity to stay focused. What was it like for actresses then? And how did you weather the storm? You know, Shelley, I, I, I guess I've been asked the question, but to my recollection, I never had a bad time in the industry. And if somebody made a, a real life pass at me, I don't think I recognized it. And why? Because I have a wild and wicked sense of humor. And I think that I was the kind of girl that the guys could sort of have sit around with them while they were having a cigarette and a beer on a set and swap dirty stories with them or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. and had and laughed my way through. And I think if I did have a pass made at me, I thought of it as a lark rather than anything serious. So I never had the guys chasing me around the desk, I'm sorry to say, because I would have written about it, you know. <laughs> but but uh, I, I don't think I ever struggled with any kind of female adversity. I don't think that ever happened to me. And if it did, I didn't recognize it. And I just sailed right through it and laughed my way through it. Well, you good know, for you. I can say about that. That's a good strategy too. I think it is. I, I think it's a, a great way to handle any kind of just say, oh, you silly fool, how adorable you are. But, you know, you're married and I'm single and we're, we're not going to play that game. OK, next, you know. <laughs> Good for you. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Great leaders challenge their people not to stop at the first right answer. Tighten the Lug Nuts is the book that will help you move past that first right answer to be more effective, more productive, and more successful. This book serves as a blueprint that can be easily applied by leaders, entrepreneurs, truckers, owner-operators, all of us in our everyday lives. This is one of the best leadership books you can read to help you accelerate towards your personal and professional goals. Plus, a portion of the proceeds will be donated to truckerschristmasgroup.org. Visit tightenthelugnuts.com to order your copy today. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. So I would say that, oh, go ahead, Kathy. Oh, no, I was just going to say that I have one word to describe you, and that's a trailblazer. You're just absolutely remarkable. As I read, as I read through all your, your Wikipedia file, I'm like, my gosh, I want to talk to this woman. This is incredible. I mean, uh, like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, from my perspective, my trailblazing, I operate the largest equipment in the world, and it's I work with a, a variety of men, but it's in a completely different setting from what you've accomplished. But I, I view you as a far more trailblazer than uh, I think anybody I've ever spoken to in my life. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think I think to survive in this business in some ways without falling apart and, and, and melting away in tears about things is is perhaps the trailblazing um you know, button can be pushed there, but you are dealing in a strictly male environment and to be the head mother of something like that, the mother superior of a business. Wow. <laughs> well, I should send you a picture of my, of uh, the truck that I drive. It literally is two and a half stories high, 3,800 square feet. It weighs a million pounds. When the box is up, it's five stories high. 
It carries 400 tons. I literally, I drive a house. <laughs> Has anybody done a wonderful uh, film shoot on you and, and all of this, a documentary? Oh, actually, well, no, I wrote a book. <laughs> and I'm going to be well, on this uh, reality show book. in that's Hollywood. On film because that, that's a great story. I should think somebody <laughs> would love to do that. And, and does all of this take place up in Canada? Yeah, it does. It does in northern Alberta. You bet. I work in the oil sands. There's, there's a not. I'm not the only woman. There's right now a, a crew of a hundred. There's twelve of us. So good for you. Bravo. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to talk to a few people about this. This is great. <laughs> Kathy's definitely an inspiration. She's a, just. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, I'm amazed at, at what she's accomplished too. Oh my lord! I'm I'm just <laughs> astounded to hear this. Wow! All right, so you'll send you a copy of my book, Ruth. Okay. <laughs> I, I wish you would. What What's the name of your book? I'll get it. Dream big. Dream big. All right. Yeah, yeah. Kathy Takaro, Dream big. Okay. You can't miss it. Okay. It's the only book with a ginormous truck on the front. <laughs> 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 I, the tires are 14 feet high. I measure five foot six, so you can imagine, right? <laughs> oh my. God. God, my God. But are your nails polished when you do this? <laughs> well, that's well, not not on the picture, but everything publicly publicly that I do, I get all dolled up and, you know, I got the, the dress and the heel. I actually I'm going to be on the oh, cover of a magazine sure. next week. It's called Hard Hat and Heels. <laughs> oh, I love that. Hard Hat and Heels is a great idea. Oh, my Lord. I'm impressed. Oh, thank you for <laughs> filling me in on this. I'm so happy to know that. <laughs> Now, Shelly, what have you done comparable? Come on, let's hear something. Uh, I, I, I've never driven anything as big as a house, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, and I'm not sure. Well, I guess if I got the proper training, I, I might give it a try. Uh, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, come on. Anybody can do it. Yeah. Ruth could do it. And, and that's what this show is about, to empower women. Um, and, and that's why we, we have you on, Ruta, because I think that uh, you're a wonderful example of what can be well, done. You know, the, the part of empowering, I think, played an effect when I, I don't know if you've read this, I, I, I dedicate one chapter to it in, in the book, uh, and that is getting my grandmother out of Siberia. Yes. Then uh, out of uh, uh, communist Lithuania at the time. Please tell us that story because I saw that. I was so impressed. You got a hold it's, of Khrushchev. There, that, that was kind of running a different kind of system and, and doing the unorthodox. And I had to be slightly slosh to do it, but I did it. You know, uh, I had been trying for years and years and years to get my grandmother first out of Siberia. My grandfather's legs were frozen on the cattle car that they were being deported on. Uh, mm. I, I have always saluted the Jews for never letting us forget about the Holocaust. And I keep saying, what the hell is the matter with us Christians that we don't remind everybody in this world that never mind six million, Stalin wiped out 30 million. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and we don't talk about it. We don't carry on about it. So I, I really admire the Jewish community for saying, don't let it happen again. Uh, so my grandparents, you know, were little farm folk who didn't have a pot to pee in and yet were deported when they were, I assume, trying to repatriate all those Baltic countries and take away the national pride and re repatriate the countries with Russians or Chinese or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that were of the communist bent. And, and I had been trying for years to get her out uh, when we found her through the Red Cross. Um, I mean, I was just a little girl when my mother found her after the war. And then eventually when we moved to California and I became an American citizen, I um, tried every which way I knew how to get her. And the original way was to send a Vizov, which a Vizov is a letter in English, of course, Lithuanian and in Russian, uh, that is an invitation uh, to grandmama saying, dear grandmother, uh, you know, I know your health is, is, is bad. You're very old. 
Um, I would want you to come and live in California where the climate is better for you. You will not be a burden to your family or the state or anybody. I will assume full responsibility. And then you have to have this thing notarized, these three pages. The notary seal now has to be approved by the city seal, the Los Angeles city seal. Now you've got to send this whole package to uh, uh, Sacramento and get the state seal. Then the whole thing goes to the state department and you get the state department seal on it. You now have a pound of letters that, that was three pages. And you send that to the Soviet Union. They take it to the local commissar who looks at it, is impressed by everything, and then goes, Nyet, and forget it. And you have to start all over again six months later because they expire. Oh mm. And I did that for 12 years. Wow. Well, and, and she was eventually allowed back from Siberia to Lithuania. You could stay in Siberia and whatever you built, or you could, you know, go back to to where your home was. Well, of course, her home has now been divvied up and given away to the local uh, Russian commissar, you know. Mm -hmm. And so she wound up living in a little town uh, on the Baltic Sea near Klaipeda with one of my aunts. And we were getting a letter from her thanking us for everything that we had sent to them all through the years that, that helped sustain them. Yeah, at the time, you could send 40 pounds. It could be a pound of coffee, a pound of sugar, a pound of tea, a, a pound of lard, you know, and some clothes and things. And my mother used to roll up $5 bills, $10 bills, $100 bills and tiny, tiny, tiny things and sew them into the seams of clothes, hopefully later saying, you know, the, the shoulder pads are not fashionable in Russia, take them out, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. then maybe they survived. And so she, we, we were getting a letter that she was dying. I got very upset because it was my one remaining grandparent that I'd worked so hard. My mother was in a spate of tears. And so I went out with friends that night. The more wine they poured, the more logical it became that I should do something extraordinary and pick up the damn phone and call Khrushchev. And I did. I placed a call at something like two in the morning, which would be, you know, business hours in Moscow, and uh, asked to the, uh, thank God in those days, ladies, the you could make person-to-person -person calls. Right. And person-to-person -person right. meant that you paid twice as much for the call when you got it, but you didn't pay unless you got your party. And mm -hmm. so I made person-to-person -person call to Nikita Khrushchev, the Kremlin, Moscow, USSR. And the bitch American operator said, how do you spell Khrushchev? Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're, uh, <laughs> we're, you know. Uh, but anyway, it was many, many back and forths with the Russian operator. Mr. Khrushchev, not available. Mr. Khrushchev, no speak. You know, that whole kind of thing that went maybe five, six times back and forth. In the meantime, I was calling the Russian embassy in Washington. And I spoke with everybody from the dishwasher to the upstairs maid. And it was nyet, 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 nyet. No, 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 no. Finally, the operator... And by now, I'm beginning to sober up and uh, getting a little headachey and a little testy. And the operator comes back and says, Mr. Khrushchev, no speak it English. You speak it interpretive, Mr. Khrushchev. And I said, okay, yes, because I remembered that the interpreter that traveled with him when he was here banging his shoe. Mm -hmm. on the podium, um uh, he, the interpreter was great because my father would laugh at what Khrushchev said. He was Russian, fluent in Russian, and say Khrushchev didn't say that, <laughs> and he made it palatable to our, you know, ears. And, mm -hmm. and so I said, okay, I'll speak with him. All about you here in the Soviet Union. We see your movies. What can I do for you? And I explained that I wanted to come to the Soviet Union. I wanted to come to Lithuania. Yeah, where nobody could go unless they were a very high party official. And not only did I want to come, I wanted to bring my mother and father, who the State Department had warned me, don't take your parents because they could be detained as Soviet citizens because they were born there. Hmm. And I thought, God's not going to be that cruel. So he said, 
uh, well, why don't you speak to your congressman about it? Well, I was testy, and I said, what the hell does my congressman have to do with my traveling in your country? This is not a matter of politics. This is not political. This is a matter of the heart. I don't even know if my grandmother is alive or dead. Either I will come to her graveside or I'll come to her bedside. I hope it's the latter. And amazingly enough, he said, present yourself again to the Soviet embassy in Washington. I thought, oh, hell, I'm going to get the runaround again. This time, the hotlines obviously were flashing between Moscow and Washington and the Soviet embassy. And I was immediately connected when I called to the first secretary, a major position in any embassy. And the first secretary was named Zenkavichus and a Lithuanian. And of course, I'm fairly fluent in Lithuanian. And long story, which I'm trying to make short, ha, huh, um, within 48 hours, my papers were signed, sealed, delivered, and my mother and father and I were on a Pan Am flight to Moscow and then doubling back to Lithuania where they caught up with their family and we found my grandmother in a hospital there. She had been miraculously moved. Hmm. I heard we were coming. And why were they so good to me in the Soviet Union? Because, and I owe it all to the press, James Bacon was the AP wire service Hollywood reporter. And he did a story about Hollywood starlet goes to Soviet Union to rescue grandmother, Siberia, blah, blah, blah. And this made headlines all around the world in every Absolutely. newspaper across the world. Well, of course the Soviets were going to be good to me. The eyes of the world were staring at them. Exactly. Watching what was going to happen to this Tootsie from Hollywood, you know? And and so I, I have, of course, had no idea that this was going on because I was already on a plane and incommunicado, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, this is the dear Lord and, and divine intervention working in wonderful and beautiful ways. But the point is for the ladies that are listening, because we are movers and shakers, ladies, do the unexpected, do the unwarranted, do whatever it takes. Just do it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <to> yes. <laughs> Amen to that. Yes. <laughs> if you sit back and say, gee, that, that really hasn't been done or that wouldn't be very polite or it, 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 it would seem pushy or whatever, so frigging what? Do it. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> you are great. Oh, my goodness. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in Northern Alberta, Canada. She's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big, an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. This is a very special shout out to all our truckers. From Starcom Racing is Quinn Hoff on tncradio.live. I uh, just wanted to give a special shout out to all the truckers out there listening. You know, uh, there's a lot of storms out there. Just stay safe. And uh, I appreciate everything they do for our country. Like I said, that I don't know if you guys heard earlier, without trucks, America stops moving. And I know that well myself coming from a family trucking business. And, uh, you know, obviously 
everyone needs truck drivers. So if you need a, you need a truck driving position, be sure to check out half transfer. And, uh, I appreciate you. Welcome back to women road warriors with Shelly Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Well, I, I hope that all of your darling listeners will take the time to pick up my book. It's not a terribly yes. expensive one. Uh, and and enjoy, hopefully, some of the treasures that filled my life, the people that made my life wonderful, the, the adventures that I had that, that grounded out my life in every way. And I love the title, by the way, Consider Your Ass Kissed. Oh, my. You know, <laughs> I owe that to, it's an expression that I have meant sincerely and gratefully from the bottom of my heart because I have been in the fundraising business for mental health for a lot of years. Yes. Mary Reynolds and I were the head mamas of the Thalians for some 55 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Thalians was a group put together by a group of young Hollywood people uh, who really uh, re were getting irritated by being called pot-smoking, sex-minded assholes who had nothing to contribute, you know, to society. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, we get around and we sing around the piano. We have drinks and whatnot. Why don't we put something together, sell a few tickets, and raise money for a charity? So they sent out Jane Mansfield and Mamie Van Dorn. Now, you want to talk about bazooms. Holy oh, yeah. Mackerel. Those ladies should have gotten us everything we needed. <laughs> but they came back <laughs> saying all, all the good diseases have been taken. And so yes. we wound up dealing with emotionally disturbed children who the doctor who was dealing with them said is like a, a rotting apple in a barrel. It'll infect the whole community, the whole barrel, unless it's taken care of. So 18 years after we took on the cause of emotionally disturbed children, we built the first building at the Cedar sinai complex, a multi, multi-million dollar building that we crazy Thalians put together. How? By doing big all-star shows, honoring fabulous people in our industry, that didn't just dazzle us on the screen or the stage, but dazzled us with their philanthropic performances as well. Mm -hmm. And they range from Frank Sinatra through Lucille Ball through, uh, gosh, Sally Fields through Liza Minnelli uh, through Whoopi Goldberg through uh, Sammy Davis. It, it was we built shows around these people charged a pretty tariff and, and raised millions and millions and millions of dollars for mental health. Wow. And then wow, about five awesome. years ago, we said, you know, it's there's something that we have been overlooking because our clinic handled pediatric through geriatric cases for uh, help and research and, and all the scientific things that we could do. And, and we discovered that the returning veterans, the beautiful young men and women that are willing to put their lives on the line for us, yes, no matter where we send them in the world, yeah. we're coming back and not getting the best America had to offer in some cases. In Very some true. cases, they were falling through the cracks, especially when it came to mental health and emotional problems, mm -hmm. which they came yeah. back with. So we teamed up with Operation Mend at UCLA at the Ronald Reagan Hospital. And we, they, Operation Mend heals the broken, fractured bodies of our beautiful young people. And we deal with the broken and fractured mind and therefore spirit and soul. And I'm very, very proud of what we're doing. I'm proud of what we're accomplishing. I'm proud of how appreciated we are by UCLA and OpMend uh, for our efforts. And of course, this has been a very difficult time because with COVID, we haven't been able to do any of our fundraising activities. Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, as Blanche Dubois said in Streetcar Named Desires, I, I have depended on the kindness of strangers to to fill our coffers. So if any of your listeners have a few dollars that they can possibly spare, please, my darlings, go to the 
Thaliens, T H A L I A N S dot org, and you will be able to see what we Thaliens have done, what we do, and just know that if you send me five bucks or five hundred thousand, consider your darling ass kissed. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm a so wonderful buying your book. Oh my goodness. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I think you've done a wonderful job, Ruta. Oh my goodness. I mean, and it's in to recognize the veterans. So many people haven't. And, and that was fortuitous also, because it's amazing how they've been overlooked and, and they yeah. have a need. Absolutely. A great need. Yeah. And, and uh, I sort of feel like we really had to concentrate on that. And Lord knows there are so many worthy causes and and so many things to give to. And Americans, and I must say Canadians and the Brits, are the most generous people in the face of the earth. If you, if you just have a story to tell, somebody will help you. And so I am sending it out via you two, my gorgeous ladies. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to uh, to mm -hmm. ask people to aid us in whatever way they can. But um, uh, very important right now is please race out to Barnes & Noble or your local bookstore. I want everybody that's out of business to be back in business. And, and uh, if you're lazy like I am, then of course it's Amazon.com. And I'm happy to say, oh, by the way, Kathy, yeah. uh, uh, I was number one on the Canadian uh, bar, uh, not Barnes and Noble, but um, Amazon for uh, Canadian authors. Excellent. Really? Yeah. That's yeah, excellent. I'm born in case everybody has forgotten, you know, which is kind of wonderful. I was born at the <laughs> other end of the world. I was born in Montreal, Canada. Oh, so was I in Val d'Or. I'm French to begin with. Is really? my first language. Val d'Or. Yeah. And my my hometown was Verdun. Oh, <laughs> I, I remember Val d'Or very well. Yeah, my whole family is still there. Actually, my mother and my sister now live with me here in Cochrane. But yeah, everyone else is all in Quebec. I have my book translated into French, of course, because all my aunts were saying, what's it say? Because nobody speaks English. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got to get it translated. So it's now translated into French and Spanish and now Hindi. So. <laughs> oh, Hindi, my God. Well, it's Caterpillar. Uh, Caterpillar makes these giant, ginormous trucks. So I do a lot of uh, stuff for them. So, yeah, <laughs> so they're the ones who translated it for me, which is super oh, cool. Oh, <laughs> how fabulous. Well, uh, you know, I, of course, have a big Lithuanian connection. And uh, amazingly enough, I have a Lithuanian passport, a Canadian passport, and an American passport. <laughs> I, I find it super interesting that you're from Lithuania because uh, I was in Tibet two years ago um, uh, for, well, I was in, in India for my book, Cater for my book with Caterpillar. And then I, I went to Singapore for my book, but in between I went to Nepal and Tibet. And in Tibet, I was on a tour with this, with this lady who was 78 at the time. And uh, we were touring all these monasteries and I was helping her up and down the stairs. Cause in my past life, I was a nurse for 13 years and I didn't want her to fall and break a hip in Tibet of all places. So oh, we befriended each other and she's from Lithuania. And so she How said, Kathy, interesting. I know, this gets better. So she interesting said, that I too, what? well, you'll read about it in the book. I too, yeah. to, to not Tibet, but to Nepal. Oh yeah. But so, so my lady, her friend, her, she's, she says, Kathy, you've got to come visit me. I'm like, well, where do you live? She says, oh, I live in Malibu. I'm like, Malibu, California. And she said, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the plane. So since then I've been to see her like five, six times. I, I, her spare room is, she allows, I, I live there now when, anytime I fly down to LA and uh, her grandfather he was the uh, the mayor of the town of Kana Kanaus. Do I say that right? Kaunas. 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 Okay, for ten years. K a u n a s. Kaunas. Yep, Kaunas. K. Yeah, that's right. And he's got the his statues in in the big square there. That's that's her grandfather. Oh well, that's and pretty highfalutin. Yeah. It gets even better. Uh, I'm in the middle. I have, I hired someone. Uh, my my Spanish translator book. Uh, her best friend is a screenwriter, movie director, and producer out of Italy. Mm -hmm. And he was in Lithuania filming. He's he's just um, uh, starting to film the the movie called The Ninth Fort. 
he's written and it's all about uh when uh was it was it uh, the nazis came in and held the people in that camp oh yes yeah so oh, the, the yeah. movie's going to be about that well he's writing my screenplay for my book <laughs> oh bravo how wonderful. Yeah. excellent well yep I i'll tell you here's here's a problem my title which has humor behind it hopefully people understand that and i keep saying if anybody gets blue nosed about consider your ass kiss, just remember that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on his ass. And if he can do that, I can kiss it. There you go. <laughs> there you are. But You're awesome. It does, it does not translate well into Lithuanian because there is not a polite or charming or humorous way of saying ass it just comes out rude so yeah. it's going to have to be a different title of lithuania i think it's going to be consider your everything kiss which is going to be a lot dirtier <laughs> <laughs> so oh, no, my friend brood will be really inspired that i that i spoke with you wait till i tell her as soon as i get my vaccine i'm flying down to visit her again in malibu now please do it when you get here call me and come on over and i'll buy you a drink or 10 okay seriously there you go yeah, I mean it. You have my number. Okay, yep. you consider that absolutely. I quit drinking nine years ago, but I'll come and visit hundred oh, percent. Okay, iced tea. What the hell, goody two shoes? Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I will. Pr I promise you, I'm coming to visit you. That would be That's lovely, awesome. honey. I look forward to it. I mean, I really look forward to it. And bring your Lithuanian friend, whom I. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, wow. So, Ruta, could you kind of give a summary of what your book's about? Uh, because, I mean, I know it's super interesting, but I don't know if you could kind of summarize it. So to start with, it's about 250 pages. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. And what's it about? It's, it's a potpourri of incidents and moments and people and happenings and dreams some fulfilled, some not, uh, that have made my life the wonderful circus that it is. And it's been a very busy life. I've, I've tried to pay back. I'm, I'm a big believer in paying forward or paying back for the great things that have happened in my life and that are still to happen. I sort of feel, even though I'm at 86 now, that I'm just beginning to understand a little bit about life and how glorious it is and how joyful it is. And I know that the Bible promises us 120 years, and I want every frigging one of them in good health and a <laughs> there you go. in good humor, in good humor. <laughs> and uh, so that's what my book is about. It's a, a little bit of everything that has made my life wonderful and worth living oh i can't wait to read it yes well you've got a fabulous personality i love what you're doing in terms of paying it forward there's so many people who don't do that and i mean that's the philosophy i have too. pay it forward and and live life to the fullest i mean you're an inspiration not only to women but everyone i think but especially to women i think that there's some wonderful lessons people maybe could learn from your book too well, I, I think women have to just wake up to the fact that they're far more powerful, really, than men. And I agree. To use the gifts that we are given, and a lot of it is intuition that men don't have, and a, a sensibility about everything in life that men don't necessarily have. Men act on on just pure instinct in some things, but we women have a, a, a very kind of muted but uh, wonderful sense that if we can use it, it's very powerful. And just use it, ladies, use it. Recognize it, try and find it, you know, listen quietly, um, pray. And it, there's a lot of ways of praying, and some of it is just sitting quietly and, and listening to your inner being to, and guide to tell you what to do. And I swear, we do have guidance. We do have guardian angels that sort of 
uh, take care of us in many ways. I write about several incidents in the book that I think people will identify with because they've had incidents occur too where they say, good God, if it hadn't been for that, I'd have been under that truck or whatever it may be. And uh, wow, just learn to recognize those voices when they speak to you. And be aware and listen, because yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe part of the, the issue today is people are so consumed with their cell phones and texting and, and they become myopic. They're not listening. They're not open anymore. Do you think that's a possibility? I totally agree with you that, that we just don't take the time to smell the roses. Yeah. Uh, and and everything is so electronic and awful, awful, awful. Uh, and I keep saying, gosh, does anybody remember what mown haze is like or, or freshly cut grass smells like or feels like? Yeah. Uh, does anyone remember what fresh corn on the cob is like when you pull off the husk and, and the, the threads? the smell of something like that, and to enjoy the beautiful, beautiful things in life that uh, have become far too rare now. And uh, I'm sort of hoping that that and the spirit of generosity, that I'm I'm afraid we're losing that spirit, that we're not teaching our yep. young people what, what generosity is or what's saying thanks in a positive way is. You can say... Oh, you can mutter, thanks, God, thanks, God. But come on, he expects a little more than that. Do something for somebody who can't do it for themselves. That's yep. thank you. Yeah, I agree. I remember being raised with, be not simply good, but good for something. <laughs> oh, that's a great line. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, yes. You oh. have to have a sense of purpose basically. Yeah. And, 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 and you're here for a reason, you know, do something for humanity. I, I totally agree. Well, I hope so. I think we have uh, become a nation of very, very entitled people mm -hmm. who think mm -hmm. I don't have to earn it. It's going to be given to me. Nobody quite understands. I shouldn't say nobody. That's a great generalization, but I see too much of it. Uh, that it's all going to be handed to me. If I just sit here and whine and piss and moan, it's going to come my way. Well, you know, whatever happened to that work ethic that we, America became great on. Yep. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, now that I've preached. <laughs> uh, hey, you're preaching to the choir. This is good. This is good. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worthwhile didn't take a lot of work. And oh, my goodness, Ruta, you have accomplished so much in your life. Uh, this is just fascinating. It, I've really enjoyed talking to you. You're, you're a huge inspiration. Well, Shelly, dear, uh, if I get to Houston, I will find you. But in the meantime, if you come this way, mm -hmm. please, please, please. I, I have a lot of astronaut friends that live down in Houston uh, that I always go to visit with. And um, and so perhaps. Um, we can sit down and, and uh, like Kathy, have a cup of tea. That would be wonderful. <laughs> yes. Maybe maybe a little champagne on the side that Kathy won't know about. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I could talk to you for hours and hours. You're just yeah. fascinating. Well, you're very kind. Instead of talking, read my book. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, Definitely. that's happening. <laughs> I'm actually going to send my send your book to my friend Baruta down in Malibu as a gift. So she'll be happy. That would be lovely. That would be absolutely yeah, I am. lovely. Okay. I'm going to, well, as soon as we hang up, I'm calling her. I'm like, you'll never believe who I just talked to. So <laughs> <laughs> that would be lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you, ladies, for Thank sharing you. your listeners with me. Thank you oh. for taking an interest in, in my book, Consider Your Ask Is. And I love me, it. I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart when I say to you, take my title seriously and consider your darling ass's gift. Okay, we will. <laughs> okay. Thank you Done. so very much, Ruta. I'm so glad you took the time to chat with us. This has been a pleasure.
Don't forget, you'll call me when you come this way, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. I will. God bless. God bless you all. Thank you so much. God bless you too. Okay. You've been listening to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show or have a topic or feedback, email us at info at tncradio.live. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in northern Alberta, Canada. She's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big, an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. Did you realize that since the pandemic began, there's been about a 1,000% increase in online alcohol sales? And did you know that the overuse of alcohol is one of the key factors in relationship issues and emotional and attitude struggles? Let's shatter all alcohol struggles with number one best-selling author David Essel's online video course, Addiction Recovery, for only $39.95 at TalkDavid.com. Discover the real cause of alcohol dependency and the key steps to take to create a healthier, more peaceful life. Be free. Grab David's video course, Addiction Recovery, for only $39.95 at TalkDavid.com. Thank you for listening to another great interview on TNC Radio.live and the Truckers Network Radio Show. All of the material you hear on TNC Radio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of TNC Radio.live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at tncradio.live.